think we're going to go ahead and get started on our program today. I have a couple of housekeeping uh, details in case you haven't been here to the Alden Library before. Uh, just so you know, our restrooms are across the elevator lobby and on your left in the, front, the Fine Arts Library. Also, if for some reason the emergency alarm goes off, our evacuation would be out this door to your right and past the classroom. On the right, there's a emergency exit. You can go out that way. Hopefully, we won't have to test that out. Um, we have a, a number, a couple of different speakers here today. And before we get started on that, however, I wanted to introduce somebody to you. All right, hi, this, this is Miguel Ruiz, and Miguel is here for a month as Yay. our LAMP scholar. <laughs> nice to meet you guys. LAMP stands for Library and Information Science Access Midwest Program. They're going to stretch that, but mm -hmm. it stands for LAMP. And Miguel is um, going to be going to library school in the fall, so this is his opportunity Yay. to find out a little bit more about what academic libraries are about. Yeah, we've had a great experience so far. Yeah, excellent. And Miguel is going to be recording our program for us, so later we can, um, you can we'll put it up on the website and you'll be able to see it then, or if you thought it was really great and you'd like your friends to see it, then they'll be able to see that. Thank you, Miguel. Mm -hmm. All right, and then um, next we'll have uh, Scott Seaman, the Dean of the Libraries, who will be introducing our speakers. Well, thanks for coming, everybody, and welcome again. This is Athens Alternatives, Locavores, Work Exchange, and Organic Farming. This promises to be a terrific uh, session, and I get the pleasure of introducing our three speakers. Our first is Angie Maiden. Angie, if you'll just wave or something. Angie joined the ACENET staff in July of 2004 as the Director of Business Innovation and became the CEO and President of ACENET in February 2006. So she works with uh, prospective entrepreneurs, small businesses, business support agencies, and other community partners to build networks for referrals, training, employment, and business expansion. And before joining ACENET, Angie served as the Chief Operating Officer for the Foundation for Appalachian Ohio, as well as the Director for Ohio University's Kids on Campus Community Partnership. Welcome, Angie. Immediately following Angie will be Beth Claudfelter. Now, Beth has been involved with the Athens Time Exchange, uh, nearly since its inception and serves as one of the three ATX coordinators. Professionally, here on campus, she directs the Office of National Competitive Awards, which specializes in awards for international travel, research, and teaching, as well as those focused on science, sustainability, and environmental issues. Finally, I'd like to introduce Jack Cantrell, now, Jack has been a vendor for the Athens Farmers Market for 11 years. He's held several positions with uh, the Athens Farmers Market, first as a board member, treasurer, and elected president in 2010. But he's more than president of the Athens Farmers Market. Jack is a beekeeper and has been a beekeeper for over 40 years, and many of you may have had honey that his bees produce. So please welcome all of these speakers, and I believe we're starting off with you. Well, it's wonderful to be here. Um, I uh, am a former, I'm a recovering teacher, so I can't help myself. I have handouts. Um, so uh, would you mind, Mr. my class, I'll just take one and pass it around, I suppose. There you are. Um, ASA has been around for over 26 years. Um, it started here in Athens, and um, I always kind of laugh. I said, yeah, I think that the founders, uh, which there were three of them, 
I think they grabbed a hold of a tail of a dog but didn't realize how big the dog was. Um, and so uh, the primary focus of ACENET has really been around food, uh, food and farming. And so um, ACENET has, uh, over the years, about 16 years ago, identified that um, value-added opportunities for our food producers was really uh, an opportunity to elongate um, their selling season. Um, it was also an opportunity for them to do some value-added, uh, fun, you know, slang words we like to use, um, but really a way for them to have bigger margins on their, uh, on their products. And so uh, a kitchen, the Food Ventures Center, was created. And when the Food Ventures Center was created, um, they almost immediately grew out of it. Um, a great problem to have, but a problem nonetheless. So, uh, so it was expanded um, once again, and quickly outgrew that as well. And so now we are in this in a situation where, uh, after uh, over 16 years of the Food Venture Center being um, uh, being in existence, uh, once again we have this opportunity of scaling up. And uh, again, wonderful wonderful problem to have. And the reason that we have such a high demand. Um, is that the folks who are coming, um, many of them are our largest group of clients are from Athens County. Um, our second largest group of folks are coming from Meigs County. And our third, the county with the third most uh, folks, is from Franklin. So people are coming from Columbus to come down here into the Appalachian region um, to, to make their products. We like that because we know we're the hub of how to get things done. So, um, so we want to continue to work on that. Right now, we're getting between 20 to 25 calls per month of new food businesses. And um, so word is spreading. Things are cooking here in Athens County. Um, but it's not just ACENET. It's because of this amazing network of organizations. And you're going to hear about the farmer's market, which we consider to be one of the most phenomenal incubators you can find. Um, we encourage folks, whether they're baking things or making things or growing things, Try it out at the farmer's market. Don't open your restaurant, don't open a bakery until you test it. And the farmer's market is absolutely perfect for that. Um, so some of the things that we're looking at, um, also having to improve upon, uh, is our capacity. And so first off, we just had folks backing up with a you know, regular truck, uh, offloading some things, uh, you know, making some salsa. Um, but then we had Frog Ranch. And Frog Ranch got started and Frog Ranch grew, and they grew, and pretty soon they were distributing nationally, and they kept growing. Um, and now they just, you know, beat our equipment to death um, on a pretty regular basis. Um, but looking at that, what a wonderful opportunity uh, for us to provide uh, some uh, infrastructure for them. Uh, the other wonderful example we have is Vino de Milo. And if you're familiar with Jonathan Leal, uh, Jonathan uh, has started off as a caterer. I believe his graduate degree was in French. Um, so you never know who your budding entrepreneurs might be, but Jonathan is now actually exporting, and he's exporting into Europe, Asia, um, in, into uh, also up into Canada, which isn't a continent, so it always seems awkward to say that. But at any rate, um, so looking at him, um, he just picked up three more large accounts. But the key challenge we have is our equipment has to be upgraded. So um, to help alleviate some of that pressure. We have just started a partnership with Smuckers, which is based here in Orville, Ohio. Um, and so we're very excited about that. They, when they describe how J.M. Smucker got started, he got started at a farmer's market. He got started doing value added. And so they really love the, the root, the story of where we are, of the area that we, that we are located, and also looking at the folks that we are trying to help support. So we're very excited about that. They've already sent us about $15,000 worth of equipment with more on the way, which we're very excited about, and also helping us to look at how we can scale up our processing um, because it's a new ball game, uh, which, is, which is wonderful. Um, so when we, look, when we have these new entrepreneurs come in, um, about 95% of them are first-generation entrepreneurs. So you can think in your own community um, you know, there are three or four uh, uh, businesses that are all, you know, it's brothers, it's the, the father and the kids. Um, they kind of grew up in this culture of entrepreneurship. About 95% of our folks, they don't have that. So for them, it's they're cutting their teeth 
um, how do I put it all together? And can you imagine all of the elements? It's not just making whatever it is that they're making, but it's all business stuff too. And so we see issues of cash flow management, big issue, um, because it's different than personal management. We also see uh, a lot of folks coming to us because marketing, where do I begin? <laughs> you know, where do I begin? And then looking at how do they access the market. So part of our work uh, in that particular issue was to come up with a, uh, back in 2003, we came up with a um, program called Food We Love. What we wanted to do was to really help to ease our producers into this market, into the retail market. So we work very closely in particular with our local Kroger as well as um, some other uh, grocers to look at um, how can we get folks on their shelves. You know, there's issues with UPCs and insurance and all those things. Um, so we wanted to make sure that we could make it as clean as possible. So when someone's ready to go into Kroger's, all the boxes are checked and they're ready to roll. So now when someone approaches Kroger's and says, I'd like to sell my products in your facility, um, they'll say, have you been working with ASNET? Because they don't have the time to go through all of that stuff, but we will take that time to ensure that folks can get on those shelves, okay? So it's really important for us. Um, and so we also do trainings. Um, we also do an immense amount of one-on-one -on -one business counseling. Every product is different, and every product has its own issues that might arise, especially if it's a meat product. Um, but all of those things are really important. So under this umbrella of Food We Love, which if you go into the Athens Kroger, you'll see that wonderful banner up there with the, uh, our little ACENET insignia in the corner. Um, it's really our way to, to get them a, an easier access to markets. And about two years ago, this idea of access to markets took another step, and we work with the Convention and Visitors Bureau, which, you know, they're supposed to be encouraging folks on what's going on here, you know, what are there to do in Athens. And one of the places, one of the things that people obviously need to do when they're here, or if you're living here or you're visiting, is they need to eat. So again, food. Um, so we work with them to develop a program called the 30 Mile Meal. And again, this is in partnership with all of the various producers. And, the, and what we wanted to do was we wanted to highlight those restaurants who were really taking a look at how they could support the local economy. It's, it's important. People don't understand that every day you have purchasing power. Every day. And every time you spend a dollar locally, in some studies, it says as much as, uh, it'll circulate in your community as much as seven times. Um, but if you go to a large chain that's not locally owned, uh, I've, seen, I've seen studies that say only 17 cents stays in the community. Everything else goes back to corporate headquarters. We want things to stay. We can build our own economy. Oh, I'm turning into Bill Clinton here suddenly. I don't know I would never do that. Sorry. Um, but we can, we can build a strong economy if we take a look at how we purchase. And part of it is changing our mindset. And it may not always be the most convenient, but the, but the impact we can have, each individually uh, and collectively, it can be immense. So some of the folks that we work with in particular, um, uh, Casa Nueva, which is a restaurant here in, in Athens. ACENET actually started off as the worker owner network way back in 1985. And Casa was one of our original, uh, was our, one of our original clients, as was Crumb's Bakery. Um, so we were very excited to see that they've continued to expand. They work with over 80 different local producers uh, in, in this area, in our region. That is phenomenal. But they have made a business decision which is paid off and if you just saw the article in the paper I can't remember which newspaper if it was in the messenger or the a news um, but they did over two million in sales two million in sales last year that is awesome and it what it says is buying local and supporting local can it can mean benefits to the profit it can mean met benefits to the people and by buying local it can also have positive uh, impacts on the environment so when we talk about people, planet, and profit, okay? So you don't have to lose out on one uh, to get the other two. Okay. Um, one of the, uh, the other things that we've been excited to do, and if you have questions, please feel free to raise your hand because I could talk all day about what we do. Um, one of the things that's really been important for us is to look at um, 
in addition to this idea of the business capacity and this idea of the facilities and infrastructure, um, we wanted to make sure that we expanded a bit because we understood not everyone are food businesses. So in 2006, we acquired Rocky Brands' former corporate headquarters and distribution center, which is based in Nelsonville. One of the things that Ace, we own five buildings uh, between Athens and Nelsonville. We only built one building. All of the other buildings we repurposed. And particularly in um, cities such as Athens and Nelsonville, we really made a conscious decision to try to put jobs right in the middle. It's easy walking distance. Um, and the one in Nelsonville actually is right beside the bike path. Um, so we like that as well. Um, but taking a look at this, uh, it was a 108,000 square foot facility. Um, and EdMap is our anchor tenant that is up there. They were there before we purchased the building. We in no way incubated EdMap. They are uh, they have seasoned uh, entrepreneurs who have who've started that company. But we're very excited to have them there and excited to work with them. Um, by, helping to, by helping to work with businesses, small businesses, we've also been able to attract some other businesses up there. So we're excited about a half million dollar improvement that will be happening there. Um, but in looking at, uh, at this issue, when we have folks who come in, they need to learn about what it means to be in business. They need to have a place sometimes for specialized space, but then they also need business capital. And right now, this is a very big issue, a very big issue because of changes in the regulations for banks. Um, a lot of our small businesses are feeling an immense squeeze. Um, lines of credit have been cut. Um, some folks are having a difficult time, difficult time accessing capital. So we're working with our board, and one of the folks who joined our board is David Wilhelm. And if you're familiar with David, he's an Athens guy. And um, this is very much the core of what he's interested in. He wants to see a, a difference made in um, easing the access for small businesses. You know, when we talk about building out infrastructure and, and other things that, that um, our farm, farm and food uh, entrepreneurs may need. Um, so we're in the process of doing that now. Uh, and working with our, our community banks who are really feeling the pinch. So if you're not familiar with it, I encourage you to, uh, to read up on, on uh, looking at business capital. So we started a, a loan fund back in 2000 called ACENET Ventures. And looking at that, um, it was really to identify opportunities that we could infuse money into the, the regional economy. To date, we've done 1.7 million, which is very small. In, in this world of, of loan funds, but we know that we can do better. And so we're in the process of raising that capital now. Um, but what we ask our foodies and our other uh, folks to do is we want them to get the big order. Um, but the problem is when they get the big order, they need all this, the ingredients and the bottles and all that stuff on the front end to be able to fulfill it. And that's, that can be quite a challenge. So we know that oftentimes we need to infuse short-term capital into those situations. Um, and the last area we've been very focused on is outreach. Um, I cannot tell you the number of communities who have called us to say, can you come here? Can you put a satellite here? Holy cow, we can barely handle you know, the two campuses we have right now. But what we do is we try to work with their partners to look at how we can build the infrastructure and the network for entrepreneurs. So we're very excited. Right now we're working with and actually meet to finalize it tomorrow in a partnership with Hawking County to look at how we can help them uh, build that infrastructure there. And we'll continue to look at how we can grow. Um, but what we know is we need to work together. The community needs to support local business. Um, our businesses need to support one another and help to educate um, the masses uh, that, that the purchasing power that they have. Um, but we are excited about working with the businesses that we've had the opportunity to work with. We're excited about growing and we know the Appalachian region, we can pull ourselves up by our own bootstraps here. We don't need someone else to come in and save the day. Um, now is the time that we really think strategically about how to grow our own. Uh, and so we're excited to do that. And if you are at all interested in helping us to do that, please let me know. All of my information is on your sheet. Uh, so feel free to give me a call. Great. All right, thank you, Angie. We have some time for questions. Does anyone have any questions for Angie? Yes. How did uh, Franklin County happen? Was that just word of mouth, or were you marketing? Were you going to them and telling them what a great deal we are? Well, you know, what happened is that um, a lot of folks get 
uh, busted for making food products in their yep. homes. Yep. And, and so um, they uh, are sent to the Ohio Department of Ag. And the Department of Ag says you need to go to ASNET. There are only three facilities like ours in the state of Ohio. We have folks, and you can kind of see on that the, the map there, we have folks who drive right past two of them to get here. Um, so when it comes to this, I'm telling you, we rock. I mean, Athens County <laughs> flipping rocks when it comes to this. And the thing is that, um, and I've had a chance to meet with our, uh, our county commissioners and our county commissioner candidates. They've all made an, a, uh, a specific trip uh, to come to ACENET and visit us and meet some of our food clients. This needs to be a priority. It's something that's already here. There's a strong foundation. Go to the farmer's market and it blows, I mean, it just blows my socks off every time I go. It's phenomenal. You know, when we have folks who are producing and we have somebody waiting to go right in after them to start producing again, wow, what an awesome problem to have. What an awesome problem. But you know, the important thing is that if we see it as a priority as the community members, then our elected officials will see it as a priority because, gee, there's primary coming up and I think everyone wants to keep their jobs. So, um, but, but it's important to communicate um, and also support the, the farmer's market. Buy local when you can. Um, all of those things are very important. Stop being educated, be ener being energized, and talking to your neighbors. So can you talk about some of the, um, some of the producers, the names of those who are using the facility? Sure. Um, Crumbs Bakery, which there's some goodies over there. Um, they are an anchor tenant in our commercial kitchen. Um, they've been with us, I think, when the doors opened, I think they were already there, um, literally in the facility. Uh, so we work with Jeremy Bowman and his crew. Um, they are a, a, um, a, a different kind of design of a, a worker owner model. Um, Crumbs, or, uh, Casa Nueva rents about 1,200 square feet from us at our uh, Athens facility. Um, looking at storage, and they still do production. Frog Ranch, um, which uh, you know, Craig Cornett started off as a uh, drywall contractor. <laughs> Who knew? Um, you know, we have Fino De Milo that I mentioned. Um, he does wine-based sauces, and uh, we have a lot of folks who sell in Whole Foods. He's one of them. Um, we have Herbal Sage uh, Tea Company with Maureen Burns. Once you meet Maureen, you'll never forget her. She definitely makes an imprint on your mind. Um, but she's fantastic. Boy, we've had DB Yummers, which is over um, some of the best barbecue sauce I've ever had. Oh, very good. Sold in Kroger's, by the way. Um, they're actually from over in Washington Courthouse. Um, but we've had, oh my goodness, um, JB King, uh, and he has pork, and he also has um, chicken, and so we've worked with him uh, over the years. You're forgetting how it's an aggregation point. Oh yes, absolutely. And what we what happens is that we have this community and people, we have a lot of folks who don't use our facility, but it's just this constant hub of activity um, where, they're, uh, where they're interconnected. And Green Edge Acres is a, a, an amazing example. I mean, um, and I think you guys have used the facility a few times. We ago. rent space there now, yeah. but it's also what, what I was saying is, is that we have several other producers who produce for our CSA, and they all 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 that stuff comes to ASNET, dropped there, refrigerated there. Then our truck comes and picks it up. So it doesn't seem like a big deal, but it is a big deal. It's and a big service deal. And CSA stands for Community Supported Agriculture, correct? And so you can buy a membership, and then every are you doing it once a month or every week? Every week. Every week. Forty weeks a year. So, so you can go and you can and I and I see them all picking up all their all their bags, um, and so they've been able to do that. And because Green Edge has extended the growing season so much, you can get leafy greens year round, which is phenomenal. Um, the other uh, aggregation point that we've been able to create, and this is in conjunction with CFI, which is Community Food Initiatives, is it's actually a distribution point for low-income families um, to get fresh fruits and vegetables. Um, and the greens, those types of things, and it's distributed. So people actually donate to CFI, uh, and then they buy at the farmer's market. Um, it's really important. Like I said, I'm, I'm a recovering teacher, I'm always a good teacher, uh, but I know what it means when kids come to school and they're hungry, 
or when they come to school and they're not, they don't have proper nutrition. They can't learn. They can't learn as well as they would otherwise. It makes an enormous difference. And right now with issues of diabetes and issues of, of obesity and those kind of things, uh, it's more important than ever, ever that we give our kids a, a healthy start. So yeah, absolutely. And we are constantly entertaining ways we can do that better. We've been working, uh, we've been working with um, David Wilhelm trying to figure out how we can develop a hub in Columbus to aggregate that. And um, uh, Warren Taylor uh, from Snowville Creamery uh, took the bull by the horns and he's already starting, started making some moves in that direction, which is fantastic. So, um, any other questions, thoughts? Wonderful. Well, thank you very much. to stay and at the end after everyone has said their piece we'll have time for a few more questions at that point but I do have um, a gift for you oh thank you a diversity mug and a copy of the brochure that's wonderful thank you very much and so did you introduce everybody or did you I did I sort of went through everyone at once okay sorry I was out of the room for a second I didn't want to add. let's uh, move to Beth Quadfelter next Beth is um, here from Athens Hi, as I said, my name is Beth Podfilter, and I'm one of the three coordinators of the Athens Time Exchange. Uh, today I'd like to tell you a little bit about what a time exchange is. I'd like to uh, go in briefly a bit into the history of time banking and time exchanges in the United States. Then I'll tell you in more detail about the Athens Time Exchange, including how people can join if they're interested in doing so. And then I'd be delighted to take your questions. Um, so, what the concept of time banking is, and some of you may have known, but or may know already, but perhaps not everybody, it is the idea of members in an organization exchanging services without paying each other. So that um, it is the concept of sort of building on the old tradition of neighbors helping neighbors. Only nowadays we can back that up with a website to keep track of things. So for example, let's say you spend two hours mowing somebody's lawn, okay? You help them out, it makes their day, they didn't have time to get to it, the neighbors were complaining. You mow their lawn, you earn two hours. That two hours is credited to you in the, on the website, um, in your account, and then you would have two hours to receive help from any other member of the time exchange, not just the person whose lawn you mowed. So by joining a time exchange, people have access to a really wide spectrum of skills and abilities, as well as the chance to really um, build community and get to know more people in their area, and I'll talk more about that later. The concept of time banking was created by a man named Dr. Edgar Kahn, who worked with um, Robert Kennedy, Bobby Kennedy, to set up the VISTA program, among other pretty impressive achievements in his life. But he was looking for a way to, um, provide sort of economic justice for more people in our country. He was really focused on the fact, as he put it, that in our nation, what is rare is considered valuable. Uh, you just have to think of people who can jump really high and dunk a basketball. Um, those people tend to be compensated ex extremely well, whereas the things that people do um, daily or often that sort of make us human, things like buying food, cooking, taking care of family members, mowing lawns, running errands, um, don't tend to be compensated nearly so well. And so he came up with, with m what might have seemed like a radical idea at the time, I don't know, that all time is equal. We all have 24 hours in the day that we can choose how to spend. And um, so he, he wrote about time banking, this, this great idea that he had in the late 1980s, and some of the first time banks in the United States got going in the 90s. Now there are something like 260 or 270 time banks around the United States, and there are um, time banks or time exchanges in a, something like 30 or 40 other nations as well. They exist in a lot of our major cities, though not all, and some of the other um, smaller communities that have really successful time exchanges are in places like Rochester, Minnesota, um, Brattleboro, Vermont, and the largest time exchange and one of the oldest um, and most established time base in the whole United States is the one in Dane County, Wisconsin, where Madison is. Uh, so we're not alone in that. The um, Athens Time Exchange got started um, 
by three people who were sitting around in October of 2010 musing on how great time banks were and wondering why we didn't have one here. <laughs> and uh, luckily for all of us, they went straight to Facebook and posted a message and said, hey, you want to talk about this? Anybody interested in helping getting one of these going maybe or talking about the possibility? And um, so an initial meeting was had in, in October of last year. Um, I got involved in November of 2010. And some of us, four of us, ended up meeting um, about weekly, trying to figure out exactly what we wanted to do here in Athens. We wanted to make our own kind of time exchange.